Hi, my name is Emily. I'm a third year graduate student in the UCSD Neuroscience Department. Um, I'm in a lab that studies human memory and Matt has finally agreed to participate in one of my studies. Um, so I'm gonna, just going to tell you a little bit about the research that I do and also what MRI is and how it works. Um, so today during Matt's uh, study session, he's going to be performing some memory tasks while I take some images of his brain using uh, magnetic resonance Im imaging or MRI. Now there are basically two different forms of MRI. Um, most people don't know that. Most people are, most are predominantly familiar with structural MRI, but there's another form that we use called functional MRI. Now, these forms of MRI are very different. Structural MRI, um, as the name suggests, is used to take pictures of the structure of your brain. Um, this technique allows very high spatial re resolution, so you can see the details of the brain, different, um, different uh, small-scale structures. Functional MRI, on the other hand, allows us to assess um, correlates of brain activity on um, a, a time scale of roughly a few seconds. So let me start by telling you a little bit about some of the basics of how MRI works. So essentially, an MRI machine is a huge magnet. The one we'll be using today um, has a field strength of three Tesla. Um, so Matt will be inside of this huge magnet. Um, what this magnet does is it aligns all of the protons in his body in the same direction. Now just as a reminder, all of our all the molecules in our entire body are made up of protons, electrons, and neutrons. Normally, the protons in your body all have a spin which is randomly oriented. This is shown by the arrows pointing in different directions in this picture. Now Emily will tell us what the MRI does to these proton spins. Um, and so this magnet is aligning everything, all the protons in his body, in one direction. This is represented here. Notice that the magnetic field represented by the arrow has now caused all the protons to be oriented in the same way, with their arrows pointing up. Now, the really cool part of this technique is that we can um, apply another magnetic field, a brief pulse, that disrupts that alignment and causes the protons to flip to another angle. Here, the lightning bolt represents the exterior pulse. You can see that this pulse causes all the protons to flip, so now they're no longer all facing up. Then, um, each of the protons gradually realigns back with the um, original magnetic field strength. Here you can see that after some time, all the protons realign to now be facing upward again, in line with the magnetic field. Now the rate at which the protons return to this original aligned state depends on the tissue in the body. So for example, a proton in water will relax back at one rate, whereas a proton in, um, say, one part of my brain will relax back at a different rate. Because of this difference in how quickly they return to their aligned state, we can measure um, or we can see different structures in the brain or in the arm or anywhere in our body. So different tissue types, shown here as protons in different colors, green or blue, take different amounts of time to return to their upward aligned position. Here you can imagine that maybe the green proton is bone and maybe the blue proton is water. And in this way, by looking at the difference in time to return back up, you can measure it what kind of tissue you're actually looking at. Um, so essentially that's how structural MRI works. It's based on how these protons relax in different tissues of our body. So in functional MRI, what you're actually measuring is the hemodynamic response. Um, this is actually a combination of blood flow into active brain areas um, and the amount of oxygen that's in that blood. So when you use a certain part of your brain, um, it needs more oxygen. Therefore, um, initially, the level of oxygen in that area decreases because it's using up that oxygen, but then 
increased blood flow to that area compensates and the amount of oxygen increases. Here, this red line indicates the change in oxygen-rich blood flow. You can see initially there's a small decrease because the oxygen is used up, but then when blood flows there's a large increase. This increase is called the hemodynamic response and can be measured with MRI. Now the way MRI works is that uh, blood with oxygen has a higher signal than blood without oxygen. So when a part of the brain becomes active, um, we get an increase in signal due to that increase in blood oxygenation. Um, we are able to measure over, um, over time how this hemodynamic response changes and we can get an indirect measure of activity that's going on in the brain. Here's an example of what this would look like. Here a brain is shown and the red coloring on top of the brain shows what parts of it were active for a certain task. Um, well this is a really powerful technique there's a certain drawback to that. Now um, the hemodynamic response is actually a very slow response. So unlike EEG or MEG, which um, can measure on the order of milliseconds, um, the time resolution for functional MRI is on the order of several seconds. So really, we can only get a rough estimate of what's going on in somebody's brain over a few second period. All right, Matt, um, so we are about ready to get started. So before we actually start the experiment, I need you to fill out a few forms here. Okay. Um, so this first one is an MRI safety screening form. It just goes over um, some questions to make sure that you don't have any metal in your body or to make sure that there's nothing that could harm you. Remember, the MRI machine is a giant magnet. That's why it's so important that Matt not have any metal in his body. have anything at all in your pockets. Nope. Nothing in your pockets. Wallet, credit cards, that will all get demagnetized. Nothing. Okay? You can take off your shoes. Um, and I'm going to have you put in some ear plugs um, because the scanner is really, really loud. Um, it can actually harm your ears. That's just from the ground. It's okay. <laughs> All right, we're all ready to get started. Now it's time for the experiment to start. Emily has Matt lay down in the scanner, and after making sure that he's comfortable, she sends him back so they can start taking pictures of his brain, and he'll start doing her memory task. Emily checks on Matt one more time, and then leaves the room so that she can control the scanner from the operator room. Once the scanner starts, Emily sees pictures of Matt's brain as the scanner is acquiring them. She can also watch Matt on a camera to make sure he's doing okay, and she can make sure that her task is running appropriately. All these things are going on um, as the experiment happens. After the scan is complete, we can look at Matt's structural MRI. These are pictures of Matt's brain that look like this. We can also look at Matt's functional MRI. Here's pictures of his brain activity for when he correctly remembers a word shown in red versus when it's a new word shown in blue. So let's review what we learned. Magnetic resonance imaging or MRI can be used to take pictures of your brain or other parts of your body. Functional MRI or fMRI can show what parts of the brain are active over a time scale of several seconds. The fMRI signal that shows brain activity actually refre reflects changes in oxygen-rich blood flow. This blood flow is a very slow response, and because of this, fMRI is very good at telling you where things are happening, but not very good about telling you when things are happening. So we say it has good spatial resolution, but poor temporal resolution.